Hi everyone, thanks for coming to our fireside. Today we're gonna to be doing kind of a deep dive into Polygon Labs and all of the cool stuff that we're building at Polygon currently. But first of all, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Steph Orpilia. Like Brad said, I'm a developer relations engineer at Polygon Labs. I think it's the coolest job in the world because I get to build really cool tech alongside developers at hackathons all over the world. And I'd also like to welcome Sai Krishna, who's the senior VP at Polygon Labs. Sai runs d the Developer Studios team, and I'm really excited to be on this fireside with him today. I'm mostly here just for the merch, guys, but in between this, I run the Dev Studio as well. So super happy to uh, uh, discuss everything that makes Polygon Polygon, and thanks, Dev, for having me. Thanks, Sai. So let's get started with you. How did you get into Web3, and then how did that eventually lead you to Polygon Labs? Much like most of us, it was accidental, but my first journey into Web3 was more from a triangle than a token. And I'll explain a little bit about that. Back uh, when I was building a virtual and augmented reality startup, that was like the last eight years of my life before this, we started building out JavaScript libraries in the open source community. That makes it easy for people to build games and 3D experiences at any point of time. We started noticing that there were projects namely the Decentralands and the sandboxes of the world, which started using this JavaScript library. And generating a tremendous amount of traffic. So I was curious. I said, great, like open source software that's actually used by production grade products. Let me go check out what these products do. So this was 2018. And uh, these products were far more rudimentary than where they are right now. We still have a long way to go. But uh, that was the first time when I even understood what it meant to build a, a persistent world, have land, uh, map that to mana or a token. And it was fascinating, right? So my first interest into the Ethereum ecosystem was back then. And since then, there's been no looking back. So built a startup, exited that to Walmart, then subsequently built a venture studio that exited to Polygon, and now running Dev Studio uh, in, in, in terms of building the rest of the developer experience out. Yeah, so Sai has been a builder and an OG metaverse person in the Web3 space since 2018, which is pretty long. And now you run Developer Studio. Can you talk about what Developer Studio at Polygon looks like? What are you building? What are the challenges and problems that you're solving currently? For sure. One of the things that when we on the floor here talk to every builder out there is why would you choose Polygon? And an answer that tends to come through is because I've been able to have the most proactive amount of support. I feel heard. And there's a core bunch of principles that I would resonate with. Now, we said, here's something that works. The protocol has been humble, and it sort of put its head down and built a lot of things so far in. How do we do more of that? Right? How do we turn up for designers, developers, game devs, um, creators, as well as lurkers, like just people who are wanting to get into the space? and provide them with a better, more consistent, and actually useful experience on stuff that can be done on chain. Now, this would start from the easiest, right? Good docs, just be proactive, reach out and help someone way more than what they, they might have even thought about or been there. So that then goes to tools, right? The tools that we provide to the developers in order to get started with. One-click authoring, publishing, what are the chains going to do, which is the right choice for you? It then goes from tools to reference implementations of here's how you could be using a tool in order to do something incredible. And from reference implementation goes to accelerators, incubators, hackathons, uh, ways in order to sponsor much of the work that they would do. We often now start flying developers out to some of the incredible events like Consensus or ETH Denver or any of these in order for them to have uh, an experience that would really get them into the crypto space. And that finally follows through with uh, making more of them founders or builders or getting them into startups where they resonate with. This entire journey is something that we realized you need to stand up for. And that's really when we put together the developer studio as a collection of teams that's able to really care about a developer and uh, just keep them happy. I love that. And I love that we focus on kind of empathy and the whole developer life cycle, understanding where people are now, and then also where they'll be as a builder in a few years when they're ready for investment, or they're ready to maybe pivot to a new project or try something new, take their project to the next level. And we're also providing them with kind of ideas. So that's always been cool to me about Polygon. And so outside of that, your team also has products that they've built. Uh, 
Most recently, the Polygon Wallet Suite's ZK EVM bridge. What was that process like building the bridge? The bridge is uh, an interesting topic for any protocol, isn't it? Uh, quick show of hands. How many of you here might have used the Polygon bridge so far in? Oh, awesome. That's, that, that's a real number. Uh, so given this, you must have all noticed that the bridge over the last couple of years has been mm, work in progress, right? And we're the first people to admit that, because uh, there was much work to be done in terms of how do we improve it, how do we make it a more delightful experience, and just make it something that people love to use every time that they use it. We looked back at this bridge and we said, let's just redo it from scratch, right? Where we are able to build out visual delight, utility, as well as present a format of the bridge that's not just going to be as good as most of the ones out there, but if not, lead the industry in terms of user experience. So the current version or the update to the bridge is specific to the ZK EVM one that we have. And the ZK EVM bridge is um, a significantly more smoother experience than anything that we've published so far in. The transactions that you do, the way that it is sort of presented from a user interface perspective, the way that the contracts work in terms of ensuring that stuff's done. We've gone through a massive update, and this is followed through from probably hundreds, if not thousands, of developers telling us, look, everything's great, but I have no clue if my funds are safe. The bridge is just wonky. So from there, we've sort of improved on a V1 of what this bridge is supposed to do, visual improvements, utility improvements, as well as a, a much faster experience on this bridge entirely. What would follow through from here is almost a one-click bridging experience that we're coming out with as a V2 that would happen through the month of May. And when that happens, um, I think Polygon would, much like the way we leapfrogged with ZKVM on top of like existing solutions that are out there, hopefully we're able to lead what a good bridge is like purely from a user experience standpoint. So hopefully we'll go to a world where Polygon's bridge is mm, to Polygon's bridge is perhaps the gold standard. Yeah, and it's been great to watch the iteration, right, from a bridge that works but isn't pleasant and user-friendly to one that's pretty delightful. And I'll actually be demoing the bridge after our conversation, so you'll all get to look at how our Polygon ZK EVM bridge looks and functions, and I hope you enjoy it as much as half of uh, the audience who raised their hands for that question did. For sure. If you don't, please, we would love that as well. The whole point of this exercise is feedback. We truly want to end up being the ones who listen better than most, if not anyone else out there, right? And that's honestly what makes Polygon what it could be right now and potentially in the future. Just the ability to put ears on ground and just listen to every little piece of feedback, good, bad, or ugly. We'll do the hardest with the second and the third. Hopefully, the first one is mostly where it's at because when Steph demos it to you, I think we've made some tremendous progress there. Absolutely. And yes, we, le we love feedback. It go it literally drives everything we're building, things that developers say, especially bad things. Some of, the, some of those are the best things to hear because then we know what to improve. No, completely. Any, anytime I want to talk to a dev, the badge comes off so that there's no bias. <laughs> right? You don't want to hear it from uh, the Polygon perspective. You want to hear it from a neutral perspective. And you then lurk around and ask people, which chain do you deploy on? Or why would you choose this chain? And uh, just walk me through the rationale and the reasoning. And very often, I think more than innovation, pace of shipping, or the things we do, or how glamorous the booth or the stall can be, if you make the dev feel heard, you show up, be of value, code with them, design with them, and just give a shit, right? I think that's going to make a tremendous difference in terms of how a developer, a community, or a group of people start thinking and feeling about what a protocol like Polygon can stand for, or any other one in the EVM ecosystem could really be. And that makes a tremendous change in terms of the kind of participation we would tend to see from uh, any talented builder out there. Absolutely. And just to give an example of that, I was on Telegram this morning, and I was scrolling through my Polygon ID and Polygon ZK EVM builder chats. And someone on the Polygon ZK EVM team had put out like an idea for something that could be built um, with the unified bridge. And he just threw it out there. And within hours, people in the community on the Telegram said, oh, built it sent him a link, and that was it. And that's kind of really cool to me, because that's just organic com community engagement with building. I, I almost call it like ideas are the original composable concept, which is you really have nothing to lose by sharing it out there. If an idea is going to be 
built better or built faster or built together with a group of people, that's the best format of representing an idea out there. In fact, I don't think we do enough of it, right, where we are deliberate on either sides in terms of the org or the community in freely sharing ideas in an open discourse or an easy way to digest it where the idea could be at a contract level, which is what's the best way to do a certain implementation, or it could be at a company level, which is what's the possibilities around Polygon ID that could be applied to an industry that we didn't think about in the past. And if we find a way in order to make these ideas be shared easier, which Hopefully, we, sh we would talk more about uh, a bit of a stab we are taking at this. Um, I think builders always like to build the most impactful things that are out there. It's, it's, it's just the point of matching interest to what's a good idea to go out and build. Right? And often, we don't need yet another NFT marketplace. We don't need yet another implementation of the same thing all over again. It's like when I started coding in, um, in, in, in the Web2 side with like React or um, Angular, the first thing you do is make a to-do app. Right? Like that's, your, that's your boilerplate code, get started with a to-do app or like a Sudoku app, and let's see what happens there. Maybe the world does not need another to-do app, right? like very candidly. So similarly, there's a bunch where we're reinventing the wheel when it comes to building the same things again, while so much of that energy can be spent on validated ideas that we could spend more time on. And that's probably an area that uh, we, we would end up making more effort as Polygon to turn up more consistently and just provide something that's, that's potentially of value. Absolutely. So in that vein, I think we should drop some alpha. What do you think? Yeah, I, th I, th yeah? I think we should do this. OK. so. This hasn't been announced officially yet, and there's no docs about this. But we're working on a RFS, or a request for startups. Sai, so, do you want to talk about what that's looking like? For sure. Um, for the ones who think RFS is similar to the Y Combinator uh, RFS or request for startups, it's 100% that. It's the same thing. Okay. So effectively, we think there isn't a good way that uh, a request for startup system exists in the Web3 space, which is VCs, builders, whales, and protocols looking at a certain idea and calling it out saying, that's an awesome idea. We should be doing more of that. Um, the world of e-commerce perhaps needs way more Web3 implementation in it than what's available right now. Or the world of DID could do a lot more on your mobile phone uh, that we aren't potentially exploring at the moment. Or how does your phone double down as a, a, a seed vault in order to do something that's interesting on top of that in signing transactions? I think there's fundamentally so many cool ideas for builders to pick up and go after. Now, these ideas if presented in an easy, palatable format, which is in-depth documentation on how do you go about building this idea, what are the approaches, and why build it, which is I've got five VCs who are interested in the same. I've got the Polygon Village, the grants, the accelerator, and the incubator programs. That could be potentially a great fit for a builder who picks this idea up and goes about it. And it makes it really easy for the builder or the developer, much like all of us, to pick an idea that could be impactful and not waste our cycles during a hackathon or uh, during an event deliberating upon what a good idea is. The lesser time we spend on the verbal joust of here's a good idea versus here's my good idea, and the more time we spend just hitting the ground and actually coding that out, I think that's just time well spent. And so RFS, or Request for Startups, is one way that we would start putting out community-sourced protocol sourced and VC sourced ideas that have the highest potential for impact, uh, at least from where we see it. And from there, the community sort of decides to vote upon it, build upon it. There could be multiple builders on the same idea. And that's the awesome part. Now you're creating opportunity in a world where it was mostly ideological deliberation on what is the best practice or approach or idea to perhaps go after. And that, I think, is net beneficial for the entire ecosystem. Absolutely. As a builder, I wish that this had existed a few years ago, right? when there were so many things in the space and we were all building the to-dos and the Sudokus. It would have been so much better to be set up for success right away and have validated ideas from the community, things that the community said, like, we need this, and then just hacked on those ideas instead. No, for sure. And almost what ended up making Web2 accelerators like Y Combinator incredibly successful, right? Innovation is... Sem half accidental and half shaped, 
right? Which is the shaping part of innovation is in order to create a funnel that is actually able to foster it, use it in a certain manner that that is actually potent in, 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 in one way. And what YC did incredibly well was to have RFSs on a yearly basis, where they used to thematically call out, here are the themes that make sense for this year. And in this zeitgeist, if you're going about building a startup in areas A, B, and C, you have the highest chances of getting backed by Y Combinator at that point of time. Now, the same thing applies through to Web3, where we're building companies out here in the open, we are constructing communities as we are publishing these products. And if you're doing that, we just extend this concept into ideas that can be composably shared and built upon. And hopefully that's the foundation of a lot of good things to come on top of the Ethereum side. Absolutely. Composability is huge because we want anything to be built on anything else and connect like Legos. I, I pick up your sentences on that more often than not. <laughs> okay, so what are some of the innovations that you think will come from RFS? Is there something that we're failing at as an Ethereum community? What should we be innovating on, whether it's like UX or usability for um, the next generation of people? How do we onboard that next billion to these apps that are be being created from RFS? For sure. When we, when we talk about incredibly high sounding ambition, like onboarding the next billion users on chain. What does that mean, right? We, we often can get caught up with the grandiose nature of the statement and forget the tactical steps towards getting there. And one such is say something like mobile, right? How many of us have a smartphone here? It's every single one of us. But since waking up today, just quick show of hands, how many of us have opened a Web3 application on our smartphone, like anything? That's like one, two, three, three hands that I see in a row where we are in a crypto conference waking up on, on a Friday morning in order to come listen to a semi-boring guy going about uh, what could be the potential way to onboard a billion people. Now, that's lacking, right? The point is the best device to access Web3 on is the device that's with you 90% of the time. In the restroom, in like your bedside, that's your phone. Why aren't we showing up on a phone better? Sure, there's a 30% tax, there are gatekeepers, and there are walled gardens that prevent it, but that still doesn't sh stop a clutch of products from existing out there. So that's one area that we would want to spend some time on, which is the quality of dApps right, is going to have to get a lot better in order for mobile users to start using them on a daily basis. Now, this could be as simple as uh, a game. Right? A gaming experience on a phone today can be far more delightful at a contract level, at a, at, at a signing of the contract level, or even at the gameplay level. Right? So how do we start providing implementations or ways that a mobile device can have better games, better dApps, as well as better experiences? So an RFS on this would be something like, how do you use Polygon ID on a phone? How do you use a work profile and a Web3 profile along with it? Or how do you have a design system like Material Design or Fluent that larger companies like Google and Microsoft have benefited from to push their narratives and ecosystems forward, similarly for Web3, in order to ensure that every builder is building an app that looks incredibly simple and delightful to use. So it could go from design, product, engineering, and each of these could have segmented ideas that we could go after. The second part, of course, on the Ethereum side is the holy grail of scaling, right? which is uh, EVM, or Z zero knowledge proofs. And ZK EVM being one way in order to get this started. Now, ZK EVM is almost like nuking the ground and, getting, uh, and, and, and beginning with a whole new area of opportunity altogether again, which opens up a tremendous number of new areas where builders almost have a land grab in terms of how quickly they would be able to go forward and build important ZK solutions that couldn't have been either done in previous rollups and POS pieces uh, or is so innovative that it pushes the boundaries of even what is possible with ZK right now. And that could be really cool as well. Completely. I'm really excited to see all of the things built on ZK EVM with account abstraction, because then we'll have experiences that are almost identical to Web 2, but with kind of like the all of the benefits of decentralization and having things in public that we get with Web3. So like imagine you're playing a game, it's on chain, it's really fast because it's powered by ZK EVM. Someone else, maybe the game company is sponsoring all the transactions to make them gasless. So as a user, you just click around like you're playing the game, any other game, and you don't even have to think about all of the things that are happening on the back end. I think that's the future I'm excited about. Yeah, the best point of time is when we don't need to imagine this, and it's like actually happening, and then you need to come and explain to me that was a lot of Web3 that was going on behind the scenes, I guess. Exactly, yeah. 
I'm going to be excited when my parents are using apps that are actually dApps and they have no idea. They don't even care. That could start from a journaling application that is built with privacy in mind or uh, maybe a clutch of other productivity side, right? Like we don't have enough tools and apps or dApps which are productivity focused, which would be on your phone, which could then help uh, privacy preserving scalable ways of actually building that out with a decentralized identity piece to it. I think the opportunity is huge. And I just wish that more categories are exploited as we bring things onto devices that we use in ways that we couldn't before with uh, ZKVM. Absolutely. So this is what our RFS or request for startups will look like. And I'd love if you all um, started checking it out as soon as we have documentation and start building all of these ideas, because we have tons of them, and we need builders like you to hack on them. In, in all honesty, RFS is more like every one of us has conversations in the company where we end up saying, dude, I just wish I can build this, or I wish someone else can build this. And every time we end up saying that if we made uh, a secondary penny on the same, I think we'll have like uh, a reasonable six figure by now, right? And uh, that's the number of times ideas are freely exchanged, but never worked upon or never uh, acted upon. Or they upon. disappear. They yeah. just kind of like go off into our heads, but we don't share them with the rest of the community. And therein, hopefully, is where we want to make some change, where ideas you've got, the community's got, a whale's got, a VC's got, or the protocol's got, gets out there into the RFS side. and. Hopefully, we're able to foster some amount of activity and building around that and just make people give a damn around the great ideas that could potentially come through from there, where execution is everything more than the idea at the end of the day. And we hope to make uh, the dev studio better developers on their execution side and the RFS better developers on the ideas that they end up executing upon. Completely. So that's more on the application side, but we also have something called PIP, which are Polygon Improvement Proposals. These are similar to EIP or BIP from Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, how do you see the community starting to contribute to our PIPs? For sure. PIP has always been something that we wanted to stand up and move on as uh, with has a, as high amount of conviction and velocity as possible. And with the recent launches of ID and ZKEVM, I think it's like no better time in order to get our uh, PIP forums up. So on Polygon, what we want to do is, just like the way we present ideas and move that forward, the protocol needs to improve. And much of the way that the protocol is designed and the forward thinking features that we'd end up integrating, what we end up prioritizing, and the way we end up running this is we progressively decentralize, but we accelerate that direction towards that. And PIP is a great way in order to help keep nudging the original goals of Ethereum that we have incorporated and help move it forward from here. It's the best way to keep the community and the protocol honest to what are our shared goals and how do we move forward, and use that as a way in order for every one of us to fire up a proposal and this proposal could be anything from design changes at the protocol level to implementations at uh, a grant level that we should be taking more into consideration. Or if you've got a really cool AI idea, given that's, that's like the hottest thing of the press at this point, what should a protocol be doing with something, an area that we have perhaps not indexed upon thus far in? And how do we move it forward? The PIP could almost be free ranging, which is like incredibly useful. But it's also very democratic, where you can start one on the proposal forum, uh, submit that, and it's up for vote. And anybody sort of has uh, the same voting function. You sort of then go out there, voice your exp and voice and express your opinions, and we're able to uh, build something out from there. Have you seen anything uh, which has been super interesting on the forum right now that uh, that the community has been at? Because every time I look at it, there's like a new proposal that's popping up on a daily basis, right? Like, or there's an hourly basis in terms of a new one that tends to come by. So there's a lot of activity, but uh, I just hope that it even increases from here. Completely. And it's cool to see it decentralized and for more and more people to get involved in ways that they might not have before. Maybe they would have gone straight to Ethereum or something, but they can surface their ideas in kind of like an, a more intimate, smaller setting and be heard and build with the team, which is awesome. So uh, the part that is true there is Ethereum equivalence, not, the, not just at the EVM level, but at the values, the uh, the shared sense of goals and understanding, and now at the PIP level as well, right? Like improvements come from the community and not just from a closed door or a closed room of uh, what people are able to think through. And therein makes a tremendous difference in terms of the participation and truly standing for the ETH values at, uh, at any point of time. Absolutely. Okay, Sai, so what else can everyone expect from Polygon this year? What are we working on behind the scenes? Can you drop a little more alpha or maybe plug um, any events coming up? For sure. On one part, I would want to go back and just 
rehash on the basics, right? We could talk about the largest sounding ideas that are present in, but success for any one of us here as stakeholders and participants is when we build and we launch something out there. We internally call this TTS or just time to ship, right? And time to ship something that's not crappy. And the time to ship, ship something that's not crappy for a developer should be as small as possible. And it's the protocol's job to ensure that it's as seamless and as frictionless as it gets to make that happen. So the developer studio was set up with this single goal in mind. Turn up, be useful, and just be hyper helpful at any point of time to a project, a dev, an indie, a hacker, a game, uh, a game studio, or just someone who's wanting to get started in this space. So this year, I think we are overhauling a ton, right from developer documentation, the developer tooling, the SDKs, the way we work with our builder network and our solution providers in order to integrate them to some of the biggest opportunities that we're seeing from brands and the way that they are sort of coming to us and asking us for solutions that they would want to incorporate in what they're up to. Then move that forward to identifying the next big wave of developers through the tracks, the programs, the villages that we run, the hackathons, the guilds, the advocates, everything on the DevRel side, which is in the developer studios, and then extend that to the right products that devs can build with RFS, with, uh, with, with everything that we do with Techstars and a few of the other accelerators where we're able to nourish and build this out, and then graduate them through to the ventures team, which is then able to fund uh, and back them for like millions of dollars, and hopefully the next big thing comes out of Polygon. And all of that coming back is just good TTS or time to ship, and uh, hopefully we get that time to ship better. So completely new dev docs, completely new support channel, easier ways in order for you to get in touch with the most important moving parts of the engineering team and the protocol team in order to sort of start having a conversation, finding ways in order to make a lot more early releases and previews happen. Uh, you will have an insider channel where you'd be able to test new products and have access to it even before things are out there. And the improvement proposal side being a clear way where I would open up that page as my home tab and keep reading that out on a daily basis now in order to see how we turn up better just give a damn and ensure that all of us here ship things that we can look back next year at consensus and say, yeah, I'm quite proud of that. So that, that's really the Dev Studio's focus and Polygon's focus right now to the average builder. I love that. And one thing that one of our founders, Mihailo, said this year is um, if you're not looking back six months ago and being a little embarrassed about what you built six months ago, you're not moving fast enough. And I think we do that as a company. No wonder I collect much. Every time I look back at the last year's bags and t-shirts, I'm like, wow, I was dumb, right, in comparison, uh, as I sort of gone through the process. So I've, I've been doing that since like t 21. Hopefully the years to go forward from here is going to be even crazier for Polygon, the builders, and just everyone in the community, right? Because we're barely getting started. And we've gone through what I believe is a roller coaster of emotions through a quarterly basis. And uh, a large part of this, is that we still remain here in this forum and this group because we want this to be the ideal vision that we realize, a world where the web is permissionless, accessible, democratic, and decentralized, that no one single actor or party is able to have access, control, or leverage upon information, data, access, or financial power that uh, can be a mus out muscling power at any point of time. So the fundamentals remain strong. The dev fundamentals remain strong. Now, hopefully, we are just able to keep executing till there's a world where most of this comes to life. And with ZK EVM, I honestly think we are closer to that answer more than ever. Agreed. OK, thank you so much, Sai. I think next we'll move into our demo of the ZK EVM bridge. And then I'll really quickly deploy a smart contract on Polygon ZK EVM. The, the point of this to, is to show you that it just works. And that's kind of the biggest compliment that we can get as people building amazing products. We've hyped this up a little, so hopefully the <laughs> demo gods have mercy on you. Uh, it's great that you're on stage and I'm not. All the best. Okay, thanks, Sai. Thank you so Give much. Give it up everyone. for Sai.